It is time, brothers. The fleet is moving out, and the world shall be consumed by the first wave of our epic truck fleet. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where we still don't have the permanent day mod, and we live in darkness! Well, that's okay, because we still are in the experimental version, and we got ourselves the multiple hoppers, buffed fluid trains, and infinite nuts! And now the nuts and the berries regrow after you pick them. And also, you might be able to notice something else that's new, and that is, um, well, everything. <laughs> Pretty much, it, it seems like the vibrance of the game was, like, cranked way, 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 way up. Which is great. It's something you have to like get used to, but it's a good change. It makes it easier to see things at night, and that is like a huge problem that I constantly complain about. So this is really nice. I like it. It's again, it's something to get used to. Took me a couple hours, honestly, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. It's no permanent day mod, but you know, it's something, right? Right. Anyway, though, we are burning daylight here, and we gotta get moving and grooving. And first off. Holy guys, did you leave a lot of suggestions for our train station name? But there is one clear one that we have to go with. The Uwu Express. Oh, no, no, no. We're gonna go with the Devi Station. You get it? Like, Devastation? But it's Devi Station? Like a train station. Do you get the joke? Do you get it? It's a play on words. Everybody leave a like. Anyway, though, it is a good thing we put this station together last time because, oh boy, we're going on an adventure today. Because with all the fluids figured out, now we just need to, like, spam our base with items and just consume the rest of the world. And today's goal is to set up our first major outpost outside of the base. Yeah, because there's a very specific spot where I want to gather a lot of materials from. So goodbye for today, base. We're going on a road trip. And our next stop is the Green Hills area. Looking familiar, guys? It's been a while. <laughs> but this is where we built our season two base. Because oh my freaking goodness, it is one of the best places to set up a base right now. Like, it's incredible. Not only is there just tons and tons of water for us to scoop up with our trains, but there's pretty much every kind of resource we need here. We have quartz, literally right beside us, right there. We have a ton of coal, right over that way, and on this beach, there's copper nodes all over the place, like right there. There's a sulfur node, there's caterium, like the whole nine yards, the bee's knees, is all right up, set up here. And also, we can make a nice turn on our train track and probably head up maybe over there. And number one, I super do want to get a train up through there because if we get a train up there, that's this area here. And then from up here, we can gather water and then go into the red forest up here and then get the bauxite, uranium, and whatever else we need from the place. And it'll be super, super convenient. So, you know, I get this a lot actually, but you always ask, how do I make the perfect turns and like the nine degree turns with train tracks? <laughs> and it's pretty crude, but pretty much I just like look down and I build up and then I try and measure things out. Like I make a stack like this. Did we get close? Kinda, not really. However, we have the tools to get a little bit closer. And yeah, after you just do this a couple times, you get something that's pretty even. Or you just build something passable that when you have the rails on top of it, it's not really a bother. And I think we kind of got the ladder here, but it works. And also speaking of track stuff, but what do you guys think of this? Just having the tracks kind of cross over each other? Because we need one track that goes outbound, right? And one inbound. And I'm pretty sure in real life that tracks cross over each other like this. Also, it saves me from building like a whole roundabout system here, and I'm not like a super big fan of roundabouts when it comes to trains. So yeah, we're gonna stick with this for now. But it looks like we have run out of daylight here, so super, super quick. We have to find a place for our train stations. So we need a train station that's down around here that will gather water, 
another train station that will be gathering items, and then, you know what, I think that'll be it, actually. Yeah, just the two, because there's a lot of items kind of like spread out in this area, and we'll probably use a conjunction of trains and trucks to gather them. And then the water's just like, you know, it's water. We've dealt with the liquids before. We get how that party plays out. And I think the best, or at least most obvious idea, is to have the water train down over here. So just along this beach, and then we'll have the other train station somewhere maybe facing in this direction? Because there's a land bridge here which will have all of our trucks crossing. And then they'll go up there, they can go down there, and yeah, I've kind of convinced myself. Well, that is the Planarino. So the train stations for this area will come off of this track, and this train track will continue straight to the other side of the map. So let's get moving, let's get grooving! Or actually, I guess first off, we have to make the hill up to there with the train tracks. So let's do that. And oh, man oh man, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I'm pretty sure I already said this, but thank you for letting me know there's a double ramp like this because the trains are able to get up this double ramp. And oh, this is going to save me eons of time. But anyway, we are out of time. The darkness is settling in. I will get back to you soon. Cool, cool, so good morning, everybody. Things have changed. We have a big ol' ramp now, brother. A big ol' ramp. And this is where we're gonna bring up all of the trains up to the Red Forest and to this area here. And man, when you look at a hill, it's like, yeah, it's like whatever. But then when you actually build the ramp for the train, it's like, dude, that is a spicy meatball and it might cause some huge problems. <laughs> we will see about that though. But on a good note, our train station's actually gonna be way easier to set up now. Because initially I want to have the train station over here, right? To gather the water from this place? But, I actually never noticed this, or at least I never paid attention to the fact that there's a massive lake right to the left here. Like look at all this water, brother! Look at it! That's at least nine pipelines of water perfectly even, right next to a beautiful stinky swamp area. Oh uh, yeah, this is where we're actually gonna gather the water. And better yet, gathering the water from there means we don't have to look at the water extractors when we're traveling on the train network over this way. So it's a win-win. Now we just need to build the trains. So I brought this down here, and this little plateau seems to be like the best base for it. I do wanna have the trucks moving and grooving around here though. So we'll have some trucks moving through here, meaning the first train station will be here, and we'll have another train station over here. And if the train stations are beside each other, now like just order of operations, the trucks have to be here. I guess this will be the water train on the right. So the pipes will have to go from there over top into here, and whew, you see, ah, <laughs> logistics, man. So many logistics. We just gotta get moving. Just gotta get grooving. That's how you get overwhelmed with this game. You're like, oh god, the variables! You just gotta be like, dude, just rock and roll, brother. Oh man, and this is why you get going on things, man. Cause some issues you think you're gonna have, just solve themselves. So, I brought down these two ramps here, thinking that this whole thing would have to loop up, and then it'd be like a whole big shebang, because this platform leads into a cliff. However, we only need to have one ramp down that it splits up between the two stations. Because lo and behold, <laughs> pun not intended, but this train station is beneath our main line. So we have an inbound line on the left and an outbound line on the right. So we don't have to loop this whole thing together. We just need to combine both the train tracks and send them up to there. Now of course, that's a whole nother can of worms, but it's easier than making a loop down here. Well, now that I look at all this empty space, it might have been easier, but you know what? No, <laughs> this is good. And then for the first time in this playthrough, we're gonna start using truck stations, which we cannot afford until now. And now we have a full eight truck stops ready to go to work with this train. And oh boy, trucks are actually a lot of fun. I know I haven't used them in this playthrough yet, but man oh man, I love them almost as much as I love trains. They are great. They make things so much easier, 
It's just they can be finicky. And I'll show that in a moment. Right now, if you haven't built a truck station before in this game, like maybe if you're new, or if you haven't seen my truck tips video, which I'll probably link in the description, I'll give you a few key words of advice here. Well, I'll just use the area actions mod to overview things here. But essentially, you want to leave a lot of room for your trucks. They can be pretty dang wild. So when they go into a truck stop, like how this system will work, a truck will come on down, will pull over next to the truck stop, and then pull back out. Whenever you're doing stuff like this, just leave them room. More room than you would expect. Just leave them a ton of freaking room. In fact, I have a little ramp back here where all of the trucks will leave the station and go back this way. I will absolutely be extending this like all the way down here. Like all the room possible, man. Like a three by three is definitely good for a turn. Two by two, don't even, <laughs> it, wor it, it can work, but trust me, just don't even try it. Just make it a three by three. Give them space. And then other than that, they have a great secret to them though. But I can only show you the secret if I die. Okay, but not really. I just wanted to get back to base so I could show you something rather cool. So I set this truck just to randomly go on some little loop here in the dirt, and it will keep doing that. But as you can see, the truck is moving relatively smoothly. Like, it'll go around its loop, you can see it in full 60 FPS, it stops where it needs to stop, and then it keeps on going. And you'd think that would be a good thing, but it really is not. Because while in this state, the truck can really goof up. Like, say it catches a little air, and it can't make a turn fast enough. Sometimes, you can see right now, it goes in a little loop, and it gets all crazy, and has to refind its way back onto the path. But even worse than that, when you're doing large truck stations, and say, I don't know, another truck comes into the fray, uh, trucks don't get along very well. Not very well at all. In fact, the physics for them is, can be interesting. You can have some fun bumper car stuff go on. Or sometimes, if you finagle things just right, one of you might end up going to space. Let's see if we can get a good crash here. Eh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> but I could get like extreme, like crossing the map Cybertruck style, extreme. But you see, there's a secret to avoid all of these problems. And you'll see it once we get far enough away. But check that out now. Yeah, you can see it now. So whereas before the truck was kind of smooth 60 FPS, now it's like teleporting. Now what the heck? is going on there, brother? Why is it teleporting? Well, it is teleporting to all of the nodes we set when we recorded a path with it. But then, once it gets back in range, it's 60 FPS again. But what we want to see is the teleporting. Because while the truck is teleporting, it will never, ever stray off of its path. It won't do the little loop-de-loop -loop around thing when it gets too much speed over the hill. It will teleport to the nodes, do its job, and that's it. Even if other trucks are in the way, like quite literally, if we run in there, throw a truck right in its path, and then let it go in its little teleporting state, it will literally phase through any obstacle in its path. So watch again. Smooth 60 FPS, da -de -de da then it starts to teleport, and then it doesn't care about obstacles, it doesn't care about anything, the truck is just teleporting around. And it works 100% flawlessly all of the time. And that is why trucks and trains work so well together. Because our main base is way over here, and all of the trucks are going to be operating in this area. Meaning they're going to be teleporting like this, and they'll always be working great. No truck collisions, no going off course into space, nothing like that. It will be a perfectly reliable system, so long as we keep them refilled with fuel. And this is also why I haven't really dealt with trucks so far in the playthrough. I wanted to have a nice, like, out of the area kind of base, where we could mess with them properly. So, come with me friends, we're going to your new home. Welcome, welcome. Excellent. So all the trucks are placed down, now we can go off and collect all the items we need. And really, we're not going to be collecting everything today. Uh, preferably, we get this station operational, and maybe decorated to make it a little bit more spicy, but aside from that, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with these guys. I don't even know if we'll use them all. 
I do know, though, that there is one place I want to stop off at right now. Oh, yeah, and this is kind of ironic, but I wanted to have these train stations next to this land bridge so we could use it for the trucks to travel across. And, um, <laughs> instead, I just made this little junction here for the trucks instead of using the land bridge. Why? Well, it was a little bit more convenient, I guess. Anyway, it works. It'll be fine. And now with this boy, it is going to be going about right up here. Or it's going to go to space. Okay, either or. But no, okay, enough. <laughs> I wanted to go up this hill here because there are three resource nodes, like, right in the area. There is a pure coal node just right there. And then... The two quartz nodes I pointed out earlier are right up on the ledge there. So, if I get rid of pretty much everything here, yes, even you, Mr. Bean, we could build a new truck stop and we can get all these items back to the station and everything will be hunky-dory. But first, nature go bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I'm a god, apparently. And now that all that pesky nature is out of the way, we're just gonna copy over this truck station design. And now we have ourselves a little truck station. Try to add a little bit of pizzazz to it. I have a little couple pillars here. And the truck stops are just inside this, uh, I guess you could call it a shed. Yeah, just a little shed. Got the quartz stones from over there, the coal from over there. Really, really straightforward. And I've built this like a loop. Typically, I always like to build my truck stations like a loop. like. All the trucks will enter from here, kind of loop behind the truck stations, and then leave out the back. It just makes things really convenient and you don't have like the trucks trying to turn around and then head back in the same direction as the oncoming trucks. That, <laughs> that can run into a couple problems. But, you know, it can be fun sometimes. But no, I, I usually just stick to this. This will be just fine. And we'll have enough fun right at the entrance to our train station here because trucks will be crossing paths all the time, and it'll be complete pandemonium. Though I've tried to organize things a little bit, and that's by having these power poles right in the middle of the road. So the inbound trucks stick to the left, outbound trucks stick to the left, etc., etc. All works out, hopefully, maybe. Who knows? And wait a second. My truck stop design is ridiculous. Why would I, why did I do this? Uh, we're actually gonna have it completely turned around. Uh, we're, this is gonna be where we enter the station from, and that's gonna be where we leave from. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, stick to the right. All right, so that was a pretty good catch. It's a good idea to have your trucks facing in the right direction before you have them run around all over the place. So that's good. Also, just spent a second grabbing one of our trains and hooking it up to our station over here and belting everything together. It's not all that complicated. We just have one of our big O trains that have the nine freight cars. And the last one right on the end is dropping off fuel, which is getting distributed to all the trucks. All the truck stops are connected up to bins down here and load up the freight platforms to scoot out. Yeah, not a very complicated process, really. And now we just have to drive the trucks to where they gotta go. Oh, and also, since this is our first, like, real outbound train base, I've decided to call this system the Voyager 1 because, you know, space nerdy stuff is my jam as well, right? Right. But now it's about time we start moving and grooving, so let's enable autopilot, or sorry, start recording, and rock and roll. Honestly, this is always the most nerve-wracking part about all truck setups. It's like, please, kids, don't screw this up. Let's just get it done first try and call it a day. Really, my big concern here is the turn. Any kind of lip or jump can cause huge issues. It's okay, we're good. Again, so long as we are going in the right direction. We're all good. We stop here. Excellent. This guy's all full. It has been waiting there forever, so let's just turn right on out of here. Try and get out of the way. Not sure if that was a tight a turn enough. We'll find out later. Then we scoot back this way, give her a good honk, and head back to the station. Ah, uh, and it's so nice when you have all the space in the world and you don't have to worry about screwing up or crashing anywhere. Feels good, man. Because now we just go around the turn, 
We might run into a problem if we catch air after this little ramp here. But if you slow down, the nodes that behind us kind of poop out slower. And that kind of makes the truck drive slower, which is important. But we are good. Going in for landing, Captain. All right, all right. Let's stop right before the pause node. And we are going to finish recording. Good. So we're able to unload there. However, we need to change something. We waited at the other stop way too long. So we're gonna go and edit the node. Because if you didn't know, you can actually click on these. You can delete the arrow nodes. And then you can simply change the time on the pause nodes, which is extremely convenient. So we're there over a minute, how about not? I usually like to put it on about 25 seconds. That typically works. So now with that, we'll change the other pause node back at the station. So hello there, brother. We are going to drive you forward a bit. So you're on the line. There we go. And then we are going to delete this pause node. Goodbye. And extend you again to 25 seconds. All right. And let's let her rip. Hopefully it doesn't crash itself. That would be bad. Okay, we already enabled the autopilot. It's rocking and rolling. Go, my champion. Consume the world. And please, don't flip or crash, okay? Not while I'm riding, brother. All right. Got around the corner, which was the spookiest part. All well and good. Excellent parking job truck, i.e. me. The best driver in all of space and time. This is an extremely tight turn though, with a ramp going down. We didn't flip. Ah, but we missed hitting the node. So if the center of the truck doesn't hit like the node, it's like, bruh, what have you done? And it's mad. It's okay. That wasn't a big like turnaround. When it turns around like that, there's a big risk of running into the oncoming traffic, which would be bad. But again, if we're just far away from the truck, it'll be okay. I'm kind of just speaking about this stuff to help you if you build trucks near your own base, because this is like key critical information. But now it looks like we're doing well, and we'll get back to our stop. And as we approach the stop, we want to take control. Because now we're going to be setting up two other trucks, and I want this one parked while we do that. I don't want this truck kind of getting in our way as we're trying to deliver other goods, right? That will just end up in an accident. So, disable autopilot. Sit pretty, my friend. Let's get trucko number two. Record a path and do the same thing with it. Now we have to squeeze on into our little parking spot safely. All right, all right. Stop right before the node. We finish recording. Then we're gonna drive this bad boy forward and change up everything again. All righty, but that truck's all good. So let's back this guy up a little bit here and record trucko number three. All right, and with them all set, it is time for the fun part, the demolition derby, as we release the fleet onto the world. And while we're close by, I can I guarantee they're going to be crashing all over the place. It's gonna be hilarious. However, we will try, quote unquote, to not let that happen, and we'll space out their departures a little bit here. It won't matter in the end. But we'll wait for this guy to get to about the turn on the hill, and then we'll send the next. All right, it is moving fast. It's moving almost as fast as that train. Dang, brother. All right, but it's at the turn. Uh, number two, go, go, go. Go. Go, go. Have you heard of driving? Go. There you go. Sometimes you just need to give it, a, give it a push. Now hurry up. The other one's gonna be coming back any second now. No, it's there for 25 seconds actually. It should be okay. We'll wait for it to pretty much immediately once it leaves, we're gonna send the next one. All right, that one's already heading out. Preferably in a dream scenario, they're both not at the station at the same time. Though I may have mistimed things. Oh, no, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going. All right, number three, number three, go, 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 go. Be gone. Ah, oh, good, and it worked immediately. Excellent. Well, we got the area action mod, and you know what? We're gonna fly around and we're going to witness the devastation. 
I already know. Oh, that's good. They're teleporting already there. That's good. But I am near certain that this is gonna be just a pandemonium. Especially when it gets to this point. These uh, truck stations are extremely close together. <gasps> Whoa, but the timing was perfect. It just left as the other arrived. Okay. Well, those, tur those timings aren't absolute. They will probably change over time. Cause like one of the trucks will crash or something will happen. They're trucks, don't trust them. Unless they're teleporting around, <laughs> there will be chaos. In the meantime though, we are getting tons and tons of goods unloaded. They're going into the bins, they're going into the train and... Oh. Why is there coal? Let me guess there's quartz. Oh, well, 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 well. We got a spicy little issue, don't we? Interesting. So what's happening? Hey, is the truck is going and touching some of the other stations. So briefly, the other stations are able to nab just a little bit of something else. Okay. Very interesting. I'm glad we caught that immediately. Luckily, it's an easy fix, since we caught it so soon, where we can just add in um, the smart splitters, just around here, and organize the lines before they head back to base. Let's watch this one as an example. It barely even touches the other box, like the unloading box for this, right? Oh no, look at that! Just touching the edge of the unloading box, and it's able to grab stuff. Fascinating, because here's the deal. Uh, the entire box, like you see the little white lines on the edges of this, that designates the loading zone. So that's why it's considered part of the building. Although like the actual structure itself only takes up like half of the white square. So I guess we're gonna run into this issue with pretty much every single truck. Yeah, again, that doesn't really matter though. Again, since we caught it, we can fix it right quick. Okay, cool. This happened to work out pretty well. So now every single belt is filtered out. Uh, the center belt will be for coal, and the right and the left one for quartz. Because there's one coal node, and two quartz nodes. Wow! And the whole process is pretty simple. Uh, this belt goes through a smart splitter, splits everything up. Then there's another smart splitter for coal, that splits the quartz to the left and the right. And then this one puts the coal in the left, quartz goes straight. Easy stuff. All makes logical sense. Everything is good in the world. I'll just have to fix up these binarinos. Apparently not that one though, because it's a special snowflake. But this one, <laughs> it needs a little work. There you go, buddy. And then you, my friend, looking just as spicy, aren't ya? There we are. Cool. But then in a twist most shocking, we haven't had a truck crash yet, which is like, I find it impossible. I can't believe it hasn't happened. Like with the trucks, they, they literally are crashing in all over the place. They're hitting walls, they're bouncing around, and they haven't hit each other yet. Like look at this, it's doing a freaking Yui. But I spaced them out so well that they're not crashing. Oh man, well I guess with three, it will be okay for now. Once we get the rest of the fleet moving and grooving, <laughs> that'll be fun. Oh, that's fine though. We did make a, like an insane amount of progress today. Like we made this Illuminati Triangle, our first truck train station, and we're getting more resources back to base finally. However though, I've run out of time for today's video, so we're gonna have to end it here. But if you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like and I hope to see you in the next video. But for now, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs> <laughs>